Welcome to another UV Mapper Pro tutorial. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will be using the C119 Flying Boxcar model. This model was provided for us by Arrowhead42 at Renderosity.com. And uh, Arrowhead42 came into the UV Mapper forum because he was having problems with mapping the engines on this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go up here and turn on the color texture checker. And we can see that, yeah, there is a problem here on the engine mapping. So the, the first thing that we're going to do is try to isolate the engines and get them so that they're the only thing displayed on here. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to select material and uh, choose engines. Now that I have the engine selected, I'm going to hit the apostrophe key on my keyboard, which will hide everything else. And in order for me to facilitate selecting them one by one, I'm going to go up here to planar mapping, choose Y axis, and don't split. Scale results. And, uh, We'll get into scale results here in a minute, but for right now, click OK, and here we are. I'm going to click the, uh, ho and hold down the plus key on the numpad, and that will enlarge the selection here, so I can see it a little better. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to select the left engine or the right engine, so I'm going to hit the enter key on the keyboard. I'm going to go up here to the rectangular marque tool and I'm going to select the left engine. Now for the purposes of, of clarity, I usually name my parts according to the nautical convention. That is the way the US Navy uh, establishes direction aboard a ship. That is if, if you are in the in the on the ship facing the bow to your left is the port and to your right is the starboard so I will be calling the left engine the port engine and I will be calling the right engine the starboard engine so what I'm gonna come up to do I'm gonna come up here to tools assign to region and I'm as soon as this comes up here tools assigned to region I am going to call this the port engine P O R T E N G I N E hit the enter key yes we want to create it hit the enter key again and now that is created similarly I'm gonna go over here whoops and I'm gonna draw a rectangular marque around the other engine Again, I'm going to Tools, Assign to Region, and I'm going to call that the Starboard Engine. But I'm going to abbreviate it, S-B-E-N-G-I-N-E, -E, Starboard Engine. I'm going to hit the Enter key, hit it again, and that has also been created. Now let's just take a second to talk about UV Mapper Regions which are peculiar onto UV Mapper. That is, other programs will not recognize the regions of UV Mapper. And uh, the reason that I assign them to the region instead of a material or a group is I need to keep track of them and be able to select them. However, I'm not ready to create a separate group or a separate material for them. I want to leave them in the, the group and the material that they're at for now. So I'm going to hit the enter key on the keyboard. And now when I right click select, I can choose select region. And you can see that uh, either one is fully selectable to me now. So I'm going to start off with the port engine. And let's see what we've got here okay what I am going to do is I'm going to go up in here 
and then I'm going to isolate this part in here so it doesn't mess us up when we go to uh, cylinder map the rest of it I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to choose select UV set well that wasn't what I wanted let's try this again select geometry no let's try this again select facet hey <laughs> yeah that's what I wanted select facet okay we're gonna bring that out here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to map it on the y-axis don't split this the y-axis is looking down from the top and I'm going to uh, hit the plus key on the numpad and enlarge it a little bit here and uh, that's what we have there and I'm going to hit the inner key to deselect it and now we can do other things here to get this mapped I'm going to go back to the rectangular marquee cool again and I'm going to try to select the cylinder the, the main cylinder that forms the engine here and I think I got it that time oh. look at this and yes I think that's gonna do it okay uh, we're gonna do a straight cylinder mapping on this I'll go to the cylinder mapping button right up here and click on it and we want separate caps and we want it mapped from front to back and again we're gonna click on the scale results key I'm gonna click OK and there we have it now you can look on here and one thing you notice is that the squares here are not square and you will see that the uh, circular cap on here is not circular so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this handle on the side I'm gonna pull that out until the end cap looks circular and you can see that the squares have resolved into squares instead of being rectangle and what this tells us is that our map will not stretch when you see the squares you know that your map is proper and your textures will not stretch when you paint them on there that's the purpose of the color texture checker also to check and see if things are backwards when you can see the numbers in their correct orientation you know that uh, everything's okay now looking at this engine we can see that the seam is on the side of it and really for ideal mapping that might not work out although I suspect that the, the seam is going to end up inside the wing let's pretend for a moment that it's not going to be like that so what we need to do is we would like to put the seam down here on the bottom where it is going to be hardly visible we want to put it basically right down this line right here in the middle of the bottom so the the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go up here to the interactive mapping button and now I'm going to hit the backspace key on the keyboard to reset this view and then I'm going to zoom out and we can see that now our mapping is slightly off so but this yellow line represents the seam so the seam is going to be along the bottom and what I am going to do here is I'm going to go here and select that and you can see that things are now like they should be we have the squares and let me zoom in here I, tell you, I do not like the way that this is is canted here this these lines should be straight along this line here and I'm gonna 
left click on this here and you can see that now I can drag it and you can you can look in the uh, texture viewport and you can see the texture change as I drag that and I'm going to try to make the lines line up here with this right here and they're pretty close there so I'm going to let it go at that now the seam is on the bottom you can see that the bottom here is split into two tabs if you look over here on the uh, texture view and now that that's how I want that I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the interactive mapping tool and we're good to go here with that so that's uh, one part of the engine mapped now I'm going to go back to the rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna select the front cowling area and we're going to have a look at that and if we look at this front cowling area we can see that there are some uh, caps in here and back here and uh, that might interfere when we do the uh, mapping again so what I want to do is I want to select all the caps separately and just go ahead and planar map them so I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, select facet and this is the facet that I have selected I'm gonna go to planar mapping along the z-axis don't split scale results and you can see that right here and you can see by the squares that the mapping came out exactly how it should and I'm going to use the plus key and the minus key on the keyboard to uh, get this to be about the size that I want it to be on the map okay I'm gonna hit the enter key to deselect it and I'm gonna use the rectangular marquee tool again to select the cowling area and I can see that I've got another cap back here to deal with I'm gonna right click on it I'm gonna select the facet and I'm gonna go to the uh, planar mapping again same same routine I had on the other one and here we are again I'm just gonna go ahead and stack that right on top of the other one hit the inner key now I'm gonna use the rectangular marquee tool one more time just like before and again there's another cap in there so I'm gonna right click it select facet and do the same routine this is the third time around my mouse is not working right but I'm going to use the uh, plus key again to enlarge it and stack it on top of the other ones now w with this one here we're backwards and what we can do to make that right is we can go to uh, select rotate flip horizontal and now it's like it should be and that is one of the reasons why we have the color texture checker turned on so I'm gonna hit the inner key to deselect that I'm gonna still be in the rectangular marquee tool and once again there's another bulkhead another facet that we have to deal with I'm gonna right click select facet and go with the planar mapping just like we did before use the plus key on the numpad to enlarge it stack it over the other ones and I'm gonna go select rotate flip horizontal and correct it hit the inner key on the keyboard use the rectangular marquee tool to select and we have finally gotten all of the bulkheads mapped that were in because this thing is, is rotating a, a little off center we can go up here and hit the backspace key on your keyboard and that will center everything up again so that it rotates within the part and uh, this part we can now go to 
and we can go to uh, cylinder mapping. We're not going to use separate caps. We're still going to use front, back, and scale results. And this is what we get. I'm going to enlarge it a bit again with the plus key on the keyboard. And you can see that the, the numbers are in the correct orientation. But, once again, the seam is on the side here. And we want it on the bottom. So I'm going to go back to the interactive mapping tool. Click on the cylinder mapping button again. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But I'm going to try to straighten this out by clicking on this axis here until it is appears to be straight back and forth. Note that the yellow line, which is our seam, is on the bottom where we want it to be. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, click out of that interactive mapping tool and uh, everything is like we want it to be right there. Now I'm going to uh, select the region, the port engine, hit the backspace tool to center ourselves up again and we can see that uh, we have pretty much the same size squares. That's what you want to make sure that all your textures will come out at the same size, the same scale. You want these little squares here to be about the same size. Now, if you want something to have greater detail, one of your textures, what you want to do is you want to enlarge your selection on the UV mapping page and now you can see that the squares are really small and and that's a rule of thumb here the smaller the square the greater your texture resolution the larger the square the smaller your texture resolution and uh, you you want to if you want nice crisp textures you want your parts as big as you can make them on the page so I'm going to try to arrange the parts to make better use of the space here. So I'm going to hit enter so we can make better use of the space. I'm going to use the rectangular marquee select tool. And I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them up here. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Shrink those down to be about the same size as the other one. However, I'm not going to stack them because I suspect that they might be different textures, using different textures. So I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to bring this part here and I'm going to shrink that down because it fits inside of here. And I'm going to shrink it down so that it does fit inside of here. And then line it up kind of close. Hit the enter key on the keyboard. And lastly, I'm going to come down here where the cowling is. And I'm going to bring it up here so it takes up a little less space. And I don't need it to be that big on the map. So I'm going to shrink everything down a bit by using the minus key on the numpad. And that's about it right there. Hit the inner key to deselect everything. I'm going to come over here and click in the perspective viewport. Hit the backspace key, which lines everything up again. <coughs> and I'm going to stop this tutorial right here because it's getting a little long at this point. And I will continue in part two 
I'll see you then. <laughs>